This is Bob Payne, Chief Investment Strategist here at Payne Capital Management with this week's market update. This week on the Street of Dreams, the market rallied hard, wiping out last week's decline and coming close to surpassing the all-time highs set just this summer. Positive economic data showing moderating inflation fueled the rally, leading many to anticipate a potential half-point rate cut from the Federal Reserve next week and a soft economic landing. Now, regardless of the outcome, Wednesday's Federal Reserve decision is expected to be eventful. Investors will closely watch forecasts for future rate cuts and any remarks from Fred Chair Jerome Powell during his press conference. Meanwhile, the bond market continued its rally, and the yield curve is no longer inverted, with the two-year Treasury note falling to its lowest level since 2022 at 3.575%. That's below the 10-year yield at 3.648%. With the inflation rate closing in on the Fed's 2% target, many are questioning why the Federal Reserve doesn't declare mission accomplished and start cutting rates by 50 basis points at each of the three remaining FOMC meetings this year. Historically, monetary easing cycles like the one we're about to start involved large and frequent rate rate cuts in response to financial crises that quickly escalated into credit crunches and recessions. This time, however, there's been no credit crunch, and the widely anticipated recession has continued to be a no-show. With moderating inflation, falling energy prices, and declining bond yields, the economy appears to have all the stimulus it needs. In my opinion, aggressive cuts by the Fed could create more problems than they solve, and stronger-than-expected growth data should lead to a measured and gradual pace of Fed rate cuts. So stay tuned. The only downside recently has been above-average short-term volatility, which is unusual in a presidential election year, especially with the barrage of negative attack ads we have to suffer on a daily basis. I'm with you. November can't come soon enough. The good news is that historically, the markets have achieved better than their average returns, regardless of which party wins the presidency. Even better, the second half of election years tend to be more positive than the first half. This is the 13th presidential election I've experienced since becoming a financial advisor in the 70s. They all end the same. In the fall, voters are anxious about their candidates' chances, and many run around with their hair on fire. However, as election day approaches, uncertainty diminishes. The president is elected. The potential impacts of the results are assessed and priced into the markets, and markets move on, typically delivering positive post-election returns. Now, if you're sitting there thinking, hey, Bob, you don't get it. It's different this time. Just remember that those are the four most dangerous words in investing.